supporting the middle class. This is the Jeff Santos Show. The show that you are tuned into, we are here every Monday through Friday, 3 to 6 Eastern Time, 12 to 3 Pacific Time. Now on video, check us out on Facebook Live. You can uh, check us out after 6 o'clock Eastern, 3 o'clock Pacific time. When we go off the air, you can watch it at your leisure. Uh, you can follow us, of course, on Twitter and Facebook at Jeff Santos Show. And if you have any thoughts and comments you want to email me, you like what you don't like, whatever. If you have any thoughts about the backdrop here, the photographs that we have, uh, all for it, folks. You know, you can uh, give me uh, any kind of feedback. Um, we always look forward to receiving them. Our next guest comes to us from the 206. Uh, and he is uh, right now going to be uh, joining us uh, via telephone. And he is, uh, of course, a uh, fantastic journalist. He's the Renaissance man. He's the executive director of uh, the fantastic Democracy Watch News. He is also very much engaged, and I think uh, importantly so, on his music world. And uh, we are going to uh, hopefully, and, and I didn't quite hear that last message, uh, Boca, um, but um, I'm hoping we can get him on the phone. Okay, very good. All right, we're going to try to see if we can uh, get MTC with us uh, momentarily. Uh, just a little housekeeping, folks, um, coming up for next week. Uh, we're going to uh, attempt to get um, a good friend, uh, Representative uh, David Cicilline, uh, back on the program with us. A lot of things going on in Congress. Uh, we haven't had a chance to uh, connect with him in uh, in a couple of weeks, so we want to see if we can get him back. Uh, also, uh, we're going to try to see if we can uh, move on the issue of uh, health care and, um, and see if we can get somebody uh, on the House uh, Health Care um, uh, Human Services Committee, too. So all those things are looking to come up next week. Of course, our regulars will return uh, likes of Alan Minsky and um, uh, Harold Meyerson on Monday. Uh, of course, Jerry Austin, David Paleologos on Tuesday. We will not be without Melissa Tomlinson one more week, though. She's back after the 11th. Our great teacher Tuesday, badass teacher, best name in politics, will be with us uh, the following Tuesday. So we'll try to catch all that up and with you. Uh, all right. Are we uh, ready to go with MTC? All right. Fantastic. Again, the Renaissance man of the Jeff Santos show. He is, uh, of course, uh, a great journalist, a uh, great musician. And uh, he joins us right now live from Seattle. MTC, how are you, man? Oh, Jeff, it's been a crazy <laughs> time in Seattle. Here, let me tell you what I've been up to. It's been, it's been something like this. <laughs> Oh, Jimmy Hendrix, beat your heart out. Another typical rock day in Seattle where uh, we actually have the. We, this is Seafair, so I got caught actually in traffic, which is why I'm not doing video with you because they closed down the freeway here and let the Blue Angels do their practice runs. So I got stuck and wasn't able to use the app on my phone. So, yeah, it's uh, the sailors are in town. They're wandering around in their in their whites, uh, having a good time. Some of them, you know, imbibing a little and enjoying the local bars and restaurants. Oh yeah. And we're gonna have the hydroplane races over the weekend. Wow. Which is a very famous uh, race for Seattle. And yeah, it's summertime, I guess. It is, yeah. It's actually been pretty good weather here. The the heat wave passed. <laughs> that was rough, but well, that's good. It's you cooled down it a bit. Now. I don't, I don't like that at all. Nice. But um, yeah, it's of a course, uh, it's back to natural Seattle weather. Yeah, well, that's cool. Send it over our way. We could use the cool temps. Uh, so, you like, I, I want to start off with some uh, some sports stuff. Uh, your Seattle Mariners went into Yankee Stadium, won two or three. Um, and, uh, you know, wait, wait, way to kick some butt. Uh, and on top of that, you know, you made a big acquisition at the trade deadline with Mr. Castillo, who's just lights out, uh, uh, you know, starter for the Cincinnati Reds, which were going nowhere. So, you know, you guys are going for it, man. It's been since 2001, you've been in the world's in the uh, playoffs. 
And, um, you know, now you're, you're uh, ready to rock and roll. I mean, I tell you, a much better situation than my Red Sox who trade away their starting catcher, uh, Mr. Vasquez. And yesterday, they're another World Series uh, uh, outfielder, Jackie Bradley, who doesn't really hit much, but was very good defensively, and they let him go too. So uh, you guys are moving in the, in the right direction. We're sort of scatterbrained going in different places. Who knows? We could very well be down in the last week of September who gets that second or third wild card. So we'll see. Maybe both of us will get in. That'll be a good thing. Um, so well, are, are you expecting leaders, when the right? Mariners oh come God. back, more more people go into the games? Oh, my God. We've had more people go into the game here in Seattle than they've had in Yankee Stadium. We've had, you know, 30,000 people showing up, just crazy stuff like that. So, yeah, it's time. Baseball is on fire in Seattle. We were watching the the uh, uh, Yankee games, and, you know, I was worried because, you know, it's the Yankees. But, yeah. when, you know, at one point the Mariners were up by like six runs, and I was going, oh, my gosh, this might be for real. And sure enough, uh, I've seen some pretty amazing things. Uh, I've seen, you know, the, the league's top base stealer doing some crazy stuff out there with Julio Rodriguez. We've got George Kirby, who is one of my favorite young new pitchers. I saw him pitch on his major league debut and he just took care of like six batters in a row, man. He was just proficient and right there in the mix. So That's good great. signs from him. You got some batters with some pretty good ER, uh, ER <laughs> I think I said that once before on your show. Yeah. Batters have a high ER average. No, it's, they have a really good batting, batting average, average and on base percentage. So got yes. batting average, we got some good, uh, good players and some good hitters. So it's looking good. I mean, I don't know if we're back to the days of Jay Beamer and, and Edgar Martinez and, you know, Ken uh, the, yeah. the, the, you know, Isha Rowe days, but, you know, I think we might be there. We might be back to some major stars and hopefully our club will be smart enough to keep them around and not yes. do the usual thing and, you know, become a farm it's team. New for the ownership, though, so right, Mark? Our yeah, exactly. These, these are new. Yeah. Owners, correct. Or yeah. Well, we've had um, Nintendo has been a major owner for a long time, and so there was a period where it did seem like uh, it was just about kind of keeping a cheap roster. Uh, now mm -hmm. I think yeah, people are ready for a winning team, and if the Mariners stay hot like this, you can bet that the fans will get way behind them because people in Seattle have been crazy about the Mariners for years, even when they were losing. So you can imagine what it's going to be like when they when they're winning. So it'll be it'll yeah, be like you know, the Seahawks all over again. So. You know, for those of you who don't uh, just new to the Jeff Santo show, we like to spend this last uh, segment on a lot more casual. Like I'm dressed today uh, for those watching on Facebook Live and, and other platforms. Uh, a little bit more casual. So you know, our good friend uh, Mark. Uh, for those who are watching uh, the video feed today is our renaissance man we'll get into music we'll get into the sports again the mariners who have been you know out of the playoffs uh, since 2001 are, are in position to do this and we'll talk about a lot of different things and these are some of the things that we want to do on a on sort of the the slower news days of friday as we go to uh you know to the top of the hour at six o'clock eastern time so we do that and there's nobody better than kind of a, a combination of chamber of commerce and uh, punk rock uh, artist um, is our good friend, uh, MTC. Um, let me ask you, uh, and, and I'm, I'm just hoping that, you know, um, the, the greatness of um, Eddie Vedder, um, of course, uh, what uh, Dave Grohl has done with Foo Fighters, and, and all of these uh, folks that have come out of the, uh, Seattle scene of the 1990s, the grunge movement of the 1990s, they are giving back. Um, and I'm wondering, you know, is there going to be a scenario where Vetter and all these folks get involved um, with the labor folks? And this happens to be that you get uh, two major companies that young people in labor, Kristen Smalls, maybe he's about 35, 40, um, who led the Amazon strike. Amazon's headquartered in New York City of Seattle. Same thing with Starbucks. You know, we had, I was watching the other day, and we're going to try to have her on, the young activist who started in Buffalo and is now 211 Starbucks around the country, Mark, 
that are now, uh, you know, unionized. It's 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 amazing, but they're just interesting that it's in your city, which again is maybe the most progressive city in the country, uh, with these two behemoths uh, that are there. You know, never mind Microsoft and everybody else. What does that What does that say, Mark? Well, I don't think that you can avoid um, being a musician from Seattle and realizing that we are the center of this kind of IT commerce thing that's going on in a lot of ways. And right. ever since, you know, Microsoft and all those billionaires, uh, Seattle has been a, a high tech city, even with Boeing, you know, long before the IT boom with, with aerospace. So I know, I know that these guys are aware of the reputation of Seattle and these corporations. I know that they're aware of the struggle that the city council and our our city council member Shama Swan has had with these corporations and trying to uh, get them to pay their corporate taxes and try to contribute to the community instead of just hiking up the real estate prices and making it unaffor uh, unaffordable for everyone. So I know that they know this. And I have seen, you know, there have been some statements by the band and some other folks in Seattle on political issues like this and especially when it comes to labor. So. Yeah, I'm hoping that that's going to happen too, Jeff. I really, I, I know a lot of the musicians that for. are getting national attention right now in Seattle. And I think, you know, I know how they feel about it, whether they decide to talk about it on stage or something is kind of where I'm trying to get them to go. Because I think it's time, you know, sometimes our, our political leaders kind of fall down on the job. They have their hands tied by their political parties and the fund machine, the campaign funding machine. But you have artists we're doing quite well. We're touring the country or touring the world in terms of Pearl Jam right now. And they have that opportunity to, to speak out. And Eddie Vedder did speak out against the pharmaceuticals and said, you know, you need to make the, the uh, vaccinations uh, free. So he was pushing that idea on a, on a global stage at one point. So, yeah, I would like to see that. I'm, I'm going to spend more time, I think, myself trying to shake the rafters a little bit and try to get get them to speak out more. Um, I'm also trying to get some of them to think about doing some benefit concerts for the victims of gun violence. Cause I think musicians could really step in there and, oh, and help yeah. out too. And that goes beyond Seattle, right? It could be, you know, we talked about Bruce Springsteen and sure. Uh, Neil Young and others who could be speaking out on that issue as well. So yeah, I think no, it's, it's a time. national I mean, it's issue, obviously, but I mean, sometimes you got to start somewhere and Seattle is a great place to start because I think it's, you know, I mean, I was we're, we've talked about this a number of times. Uh, have you, Mar have we, Mark? Uh, you know, the first uh, city to find, um, you know, marijuana, and the first state actually in Washington State. Uh, you know, you had SeaTac with the first minimum wage of fifteen dollars. You know, I mean, it's always been the first. I mean, more so than you know, the more the more well known progressive or liberal city of um, you know San Francisco, as an example, or our, our good friends in Madison. Uh, WI or, or, or Denver, Colorado or New York City or Boston. And I think that this is this is to me, you know, something that is um, I think the rest of the country has to figure out, you know, the, let, let's figure out what is in the water in Seattle. That's, you know, bringing out progressive leaders. You look at Jayapal, you know, she, you know, she's not from New York or California, but she's the head of the progressive caucus. You know, I mean, Inslee you know, is, is really one of the top environmental uh, folks. So it, it's really great what you guys have developed there. And I just hope you continue it. And, you know, you can kick out your two senators, which has sort of, you know, been way behind They're They're still living in the 90s when both of them were elected, Cantwell and Marty. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, Bill Clinton is gone. And, uh, you know, so so isn't, um, you know, the, the 90s rock scene, even though I miss them. Um, a lot more than I, uh, you know, the, the two senators. Um, your your thoughts, my friend. Well, it's all I can say is I hope we can get genetically modified uh, organisms labeled here because that's the one thing we failed <laughs> to do several times. There have been some ballot measures, so that would that would be our next step in terms of setting a standard for the rest of the country. Um, but unfortunately, Monsanto and you know the, the uh, major grocery chains and stuff got together and put millions of dollars against that initiative to get it, um, to get it defeated. So hopefully we can bring that back. There are some other things going on, like 
there is a social housing uh, bill going through the state, which is being sponsored by our, our friend Frank Joff, who's a longtime housing activist from Seattle. Um, I mentioned before that he, he wrote a poem and I put music to it about housing, the history of housing in Seattle. And they're pushing that pretty seriously. There's also um, a measure for a guaranteed basic income that's going through the state legislature right now that the Democrats are pushing. So we'll see. We could set a standard on a couple other issues here coming up, Jeff. I hope that that's true. The social housing initiative is especially important since so many people here are unable to, unable to afford the increasing rents, the skyrocketing rents, as I put it here. The rents are too damn high, as the guy, you know, who rents Too damn high, here. exactly. So, so that could be another way that we could set the standard. And that is something that I really want to see musicians get behind. Because, man, you know, if you can't stand up for homeless people in your own community, you know, uh, Pearl Jam did do two major concerts before the pandemic shut down um, to raise money for homeless shelters in Seattle. And they raised millions of dollars um, during those two shows at Safeco Field. So, hey, you know, I'm sure that they'll get behind it. And, you know, then if we can get um, something done on the basic guaranteed income, at least some kind of a, a beta test program or something to, to get that going. It's already happening in cities like Tacoma, and uh, apparently there are like 56 other mayors or across the country who have signed on to a basic guaranteed income idea. Um, so that might be the next step, Jeff. That might be the next breaking news for Seattle. And we just had our Washington State primaries. So, you know, some of the stuff uh, is going to be on the ballot coming up in uh, November, too. So we'll see how that all goes. No doubt. All right, let's open up the phones. Uh, if we can uh, bring back our good friend John in Minneapolis, uh, always has uh, something to say to our good friend MTC. Uh, is that uh, is that possible? Can we bring our good friend Mark from Minneapolis on? Mark, can you hear me? We don't have Mark. Okay. Hello, I mean, John. I'm sorry. Uh, John's not there. Okay. No worries. Um, uh, let me ask you this. You do have John. Okay. Uh, John, you are next with Mark Taylor Canfield. Uh, uh, final minutes here on the Jeff Santos Show. And Puck, how are you? You know, it's it's great because Minnesota, along with Massachusetts, is like the home of hockey. So, you know, you named them appropriately since you live in Minnesota. Um, go right ahead, John, and, and, and pat uh, Puck on the head for me. Yeah, I, I uh, just was wondering what the weather is like up in Seattle. I bet it's a lot cooler than than uh, it is here, which is, I think, 90 degrees. So it's a bit warm outside. Yeah, it, it cooled down. I actually woke up um, to a cool apartment. So, yeah, it's the, the night, the evening times, it's cooling down. We're back to the normal Seattle weather where as soon as the sun goes down, everybody runs from the beach because they get cold. So that's a good sign. And we had an amazing yeah. art walk last yeah. night. Uh, one of the best I've ever seen. There was a building down on Pioneer Square that had eight floors of nothing but art exhibits. A group called I Love Seattle, XO Seattle, is doing this amazing job of breaking new artists here. And all of, a lot of the old timers like Jose Rodriguez, our world-renowned former Washington State Arts Commission member, um, was there. And Steve Gilbert, the guy who photographed the Ramones and went on tour with Pearl Jam and stuff, he was there. So all of the the old school artists who are really, you know, helping break new talent in Seattle were there as long as as well as a lot of new talent. And the weather was perfect. So I guess we're back <laughs> to, to normal Seattle weather, which is pretty pleasant in the summer. It's pretty nice. Well, that's that's fantastic. Yeah. No rain, no clouds. That's a good thing. That too. Just sunshine, Jeff. Just good old uh, no none of that liquid sunshine that we normally get. But it did <laughs> rain a little bit right after the pandemic, and everybody was so happy. Or the pandemic, excuse me. Right after the the heat wave, people were so happy to see the rain. And I think after days and days of hot weather here, because it it did get into the nineties. George Clinton was in town the grandfather of funk doing a great show there at the zoo and he was suffering from the heat, man. It was tough for him and for me as a journalist trying to cover it. So I'm glad we're back to normal temperatures. It feels nice. Time to go yeah. kayaking again. There you go. Go kayaking. It's a good thing. Uh, John, thank you for the call. Uh, have yourself a good weekend, John. I uh, appreciate it. Um, and I hope you get some cooler weather when mm -hmm. we get it too. Uh, so hopefully that'll be the case. Uh, 
uh, let me just uh, ask you, uh, Mark, is, is there at all a opportunity, um, you know, you think uh, with a lot of young people being active in the, in the issue of, um, of labor rights, we were talking with our good friend Harvey Kay earlier about this issue. Um, do you sense that that will get people to run for office? In other words, can you see in the next couple of years you know, a, a 25, uh, or I guess I uh, have to be, I think 30 to run for Senate, if I'm not mistaken. Um, 35 for president, 30 for Senate, 25 for the house. Do you see some of these young generation Z, uh, millennial types, you know, challenging Patty Murray, challenging Maria Cantwell, and, you know, sort of a new generation of folks as they are making changes at Starbucks and Amazon and all these different places around the country and these are young people, do you think that they'll run for office? And will Seattle be one of the places that we'll see it uh, pop out? Well, we still have some pretty strong incumbents, but, you know, Tiffany Smiley, who's actually a a Republican, ran against Patty Murray in the um, primary and got 500,000 votes as opposed to Murray's 811,000. So the Democrats are still winning these elections, but uh, yeah, you can bet that there's going to be some challengers along the way. Uh, unfortunately, the the closest ch- challenger on the Democratic side only got 16,000 votes, which is like 1%. So with 71% of the votes counted, Patty Murray is definitely you know going to win this primary and go on to the general election. Um, same thing with U.S. Uh, House of Representatives Rick Larson. He won um, with 46% uh, of the vote. Uh, in the primary. So a lot of these people who have been around for a long time have a lot of power, have a lot of, you know, and Maria Cantwell being one of them. Um, but, you know, at some point, yeah, I think they're, they're going to have to either retire or be challenged by somebody who's, who's going to get those votes. And I think we're ready for that. Uh, it's a young uh, voting block here, especially in the King County, Seattle area. A lot of young people mm-hmm. have moved to this area, a lot of new families, um, so yeah, I can, I can see some challenges coming up, but right now the incumbents look like they have, you know, they definitely have the advantage and, you know, they've got the party machine behind them. They've got, uh, the, the long time, um, experience, you know, running the state. So people are sticking with that. But at some point we are, we're going to need some new blood because Patty Murray and Maria Cantwell have been around forever and have not always been right there on the cutting edge of the progressive issues. You know, they sometimes have been dragged kicking and screaming, although Cantwell has been really good on things like net neutrality and, and Teddy Murray, you know, recently has sided with the progressives wing of the democratic party on some major issues. So maybe good. they're realizing it too, that, you know, they're getting pressure from below to represent uh, the younger crowd in the state of Washington. And so we'll see Jeff right now, though, like I said, uh, Patty Murray uh, won her uh, primary decisively once again. So it doesn't look like she's going to be challenged this time around. No doubt. Hey, Mark, uh, I know people can follow you on YouTube and a lot of other places. Uh, you know, give us uh, that in 30 seconds because we've got to run, uh, my friend. Yes. Uh, check out my YouTube channel and subscribe. Uh, that's where a lot of uh, my journalism and music videos end up. So just go to Mark Taylor Canfield at YouTube. You can also find me at SoundCloud. Um, so you can hear a bunch of my music there. And of course, I'm all over Facebook and Twitter too. Every day, pretty much I'm out there retweeting guests like Harvey K <laughs> from your show and John there Nichols and Alan Minsky and folks like that. And following Joe Sandberg as he every day hits the the issue on minimum raising the minimum wage and thanks Joe for doing you know, the right thing there in on that issue and good luck with the lawsuit. Yeah. Good luck with the exactly. lawsuit there in California for getting that done. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, Hey, but uh, anyway, thank you, my friend. Have a good weekend. You too. I'm sorry about the video. Next time we'll definitely do video and you guys can get a, get a view of what the recording studio like is like, I blame the blue angels today because they, they <laughs> kept us from getting back to the studio in time to set up that link. So I, Apologize for that, but we'll do it next time. Really exciting to see you on Facebook and and seeing your wonderful face up there, Jeff. It's looking good. It sounds good, too. A little casual Friday look. Next time, uh, we'll we'll bring a shirt and tie for you. (laughs) Well, maybe the shirt and the coat, (laughs) not a tie.
Thanks, man. Hey, I want to thank uh, uh, our, all of our guests, Mark Taylor Canfield, Harvey K, uh, Andrew Perez, of course, Richard Lapchick, uh, all fantastic. Uh, I want to thank Freddie Santori for uh, producing the whole Boca team down there. Uh, one of these days, look forward to getting down there and, and seeing you all. Uh, until Monday, folks, I ask you to keep on fighting peacefully. Please, peacefully. I want to show contrast with the other side. Remember January 6th. Have yourself a wonderful weekend. Until Monday, my name is Jeff Santos, and right now it is my time to say I gotta go.